Greece is an incredible country, the place where democracy was born, and where moussaka comes from. Grab some fresh olives and let's explore some incredible abandoned places in Greece. City of Mistress, Sparta. This is not Sparta. This is Mistress, close to ancient Sparta. This is where the last Byzantine emperor was crowned. From the imposing views from the medieval fortress Villahardin on the Tigetus Mountains to the frescoes, arches, and medieval churches in the city, Mistress was a buzzing hub of prosperity in its day. Art, culture, and conflict has left its mark on the land. Mistress saw many different rulers, from the Turks to the Venetians and finally the Ottomans. The city was predominantly abandoned during the 19th century when the Greeks sought independence. Nobody returned as the town of Sparta was then built. Today, there are a few nuns who live in the Pantanasa Monastery to tend to the garden and feed the local feral cats. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1989. The Franjo Castella Fortress and the Drosselites, Crete. One way to keep unruly locals in check is to build a garrison. Added bonus, it also deterred potential pirates. That is what the Phoenicians did in 1373, a few miles east of Sophakia, Crete. The naming of the garrison was dependent on who you asked. For the Venetians, they named it the Castle of Nikitas, after a nearby church. It was called Franjo Castello, Castle of the Catholic Foreigners, by the Sophakians. In the early morning, each year on the anniversary of the Battle of Franjo Castello, 17th of May, 1828, locals say they see the ghosts of the soldiers who formed part of the garrison. These apparitions are dressed in black and make their way to the castle, either on foot or on horseback. The ghosts are called the Drosselites or the Dew Men. They got this name because when they appear so early in the morning, the dew is fresh on the ground. The Drosselites are believed to have defended the castle against the Turks, and their bodies remained unburied for ages, until finally strong winds covered their bodies in sand from Orti Amos Beach. Tower of Mokelos, Aegina. Being abandoned once is bad, but for the Tower of Mokelos, also called the Pink Tower, this happened twice. The tower is believed to have been built during the second Venetian occupation of Aegina between 1687 and 1714. The rulers, in anticipation of the Turks attempting to return siege, started heavily fortifying the city. The Pink Tower was built on the main road, directly behind the harbour. In 1714, the Turks returned, and the tower was abandoned. It was not until the revolutionary leader leader, Spiridon Markelos, bought it in 1802. He renovated the tower and made it his personal residence. The tower was then renamed the Tower of Markelos. When the Greeks sought independence, Markelos joined the effort and opened his house to politicians and military leaders. Once Greek independence was established, the tower was used as the HQ for the temporary ground committee between 1826 and 1828. The pink tower was then again abandoned in the 19th century and left to decay. Today, the building has been acquired by local government and is now a partially renovated historic building. Red House of Thessaloniki Thessaloniki There is luck and then there is the Red House luck. On the corner of Agia Sophia Street and Ermu stands the Longos Mansion, also known as the Red House because of its striking color. Bad luck has plagued this house since it was built for the wealthy textile industrialist Giannis Longho in 1926. As the house was finished, the construction company who built it went bankrupt and the Longos factory burned to the ground. Because of inheritance issues, the Red House remained abandoned for 40 years. Today, only three coffee shops take the ground floor. In 2014, Ivan Savidas, owner of the Greek football team, bought the property. Did his luck run out too? Well, in 2018, this wealthy businessman stormed onto the pitch during a game between his park team and the Ike Athens when a goal he team scored in the 89th minute of the game was disallowed. He carried a firearm with him and ended up being banned from the pitch for five years and a proposed 50,000 euro fine. It seems like his luck also ran out. Spinalonga Island, Lasiti. The island of Spinalonga is an uninhabited island off the coast of Crete, which used to house the sickest people for over 50 years. The island itself has had an interesting past. This island was held by both the Venetians as well as the Ottoman Turks until the last Turks left the island in the early 1900s. In 1903, the island became a leper colony, as the disease back then was considered incurable. So the Spinalonga leper colony was founded. Just under 1,000 patients were living on the island 
at its peak in 1933. A law student, Raman Dacus, arrived at the colony in 1936. After being diagnosed with leprosy, he founded the Brotherhood of the Sick of Spinalonga, which advocated for better living conditions. The island eventually had its own church, school, and several shops. When the cure for leprosy was discovered in 1948, the inhabitants were treated and sent to the mainland. The island officially closed in 1957, and the Greek government destroyed all records of the island being a leper colony. From the 1980s, you could take a ferry to visit the abandoned island to explore the crumbling remains. Demetrios Laconia what a sight to see! An abandoned ship on a beautiful stretch of Greek beach. This rusted 220-foot or 67-meter freight ship resting along the coast is just as strange looking as the rumors that surround it. Built in 1950 in Denmark and christened Klintholm, she was acquired by a Greek company and renamed Demetrias. In 1980, the ship was moored in Githio and remained abandoned for about a year. Declared unsafe in 1981, she broke free from her mooring during rough weather. For a month, the ship wandered aimlessly throughout the Laconian Gulf, where it finally settled on the shore. The rumors around this ship make it more interesting, as it has been claimed to have carried illegal tobacco and burned to hide the evidence. It's now a popular dive site. Fatia, the abandoned towers of Mani, Peloponnese. Feuding families is quite Shakespearean, but at the abandoned towers of Mani, this was the way of life. These towers date back to the 18th century and are built on the rocky, infertile land of Mani, high above sea level. The towers were built not only to protect the inhabitants, but to protect them from their own families, as feuds were rife amongst them. The inhabitants, Maniates, were as tough and hot-headed as they were hospitable, especially among the Greeks. There was an unsuccessful attempt to turn the towers into a tourist spot after 1980, as that is when they got electricity, which should have included a hotel and taverns. But thankfully, the project failed, as this is now one of the most photographed places in Greece and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, with 800 towers still standing. Tatoi Palace Aharnes Overgrown gardens and an old building falling apart. This is all that is left of the former Greek royal family Summer Palace. In its heyday, the Tatoi Palace could have been a mini-village, with churches, a butchery and winery. The recent history of the palace is extremely turbulent. During the global conflict of 1914, the main house burned down. About 10 years later, George II of the Hellenes lost control of the property, which his father bought in the 1880s. During the further conflict between 1939 and 1945, when the king was in exile, German occupiers destroyed most of the forest surrounding the palace. After the monarchy, the estate continued to pass from owner to owner until the Greek government illegally confiscated all former royal estates in 1994. The plans were to make it into a museum, but because of financial issues and political spats, none of this happened. The former grandeur is gone, but you can still go see the burial places of George I and George II of Hellenes, as well as other royals. Perithia, Mount Pantocratora. When you want to explore, old is always better than new. Or is it? You can decide when heading to Perithia. You can opt to explore the abandoned one or the new Perithia, which is located on Corfu. And it's everything you'd expect from a bustling Greek village. However, old Perithia is one of the older uninhabited villages on the island Perithia. Built in the Byzantine times around the 14th century, this abandoned village overlooks the sea from Mount Pantocratora. Old Perithia was once the wealthiest village on the island, and even though the ancient buildings are crumbling, it is still running. The population is a fraction of what it was, so abandoned is not quite true. It's more of a ghost town. The villagers that are still living in this amazing town still operate a tavern and a bed and breakfast. The village is slowly being restored, but the inhabitants are in no hurry. They actually take pride in the fact that old Perithia is where time does not fly. Have you ever traveled to any of these abandoned places in Greece? We welcome your travel tales in the comments below. 1. Elinikon International Airport, Athens Air today, gone tomorrow. For nearly 60 years, Elinikon International Airport was the airport for Athens. But in March 2001, it was replaced by the new international airport, Eleftherios Venizelos. Elinikon, also called Hellenikon, was located about 4 miles from Athens and was constructed just before the second global conflict of 1939, when the area was barely inhabited at the time. For years, the airport was one of Europe's few airports that were inside a city and very close to the city centre. When the new airport was opened outside Sparta, Elenikon was abandoned once and for all. 
the long-delayed proposed site development of Ilinicon, costing roughly $8.75 billion, seems to have been forgotten because of the fear of COVID-19. After the notoriously picky Central Archaeological Council, or KAS, gave its approval to demolish the old site. Minister of Investment and Development has stated that bureaucratic work is still happening for the site and wants the development to still happen after COVID-19. But for now, it remains empty, abandoned and in disrepair.